Next, I would like to invite Ms. So E again in front in the front to be a moderator of this panel session. Let's hear from each other from one session. The representative from four discipline groups will summarize their problem and implementation. Each group will have five minutes to present, and Professor So E will give comment and suggestion to you. Now, I would like to pass pass the floor to Ms. So E. And thank you also uh, for this very uh, refreshing talk also about this concept of identifying our cultural um, uniqueness while at the same time reaching out toward other places and knowing that we, we don't wish to um, make everything look like toast so there's no way to identify a Thai meal or a Taiwanese meal or a Scottish meal, for that example, but that there are these differences that we have, but also things in common upon which we can agree. So thank you for uh, shedding light upon that. And what we want to do now is hear from the different groups. And we had conversations, some of the groups broke into slightly smaller groups. So could we please have the representative from the bio group? We have three separate groups from the bio group. And I think if we have microphone, better to just go around so you don't necessarily have to come to the podium. But we're going to have five minutes each to tell us about your most significant problem and then the solution. So five minutes in total. And we can uh, have conversation at the end after hearing and let's see how much in common we have. So the bio group. Following the biological rhythm, maybe they're taking a nap. <laughs> okay. Do you want to? representatives from the Biosciences and Agri-Science uh, group. Um, we had a very nice group. We had uh, some uh, more elderly scientists, shall we say, such as myself. We had some young career, some mid-career, and we had, uh, I was very, very pleased that we had two PhD students from Casa University, which was wonderful. Um, they're out to educate themselves uh, before starting. Um, we had quite a long conversation um, about many different problems and in the end when we were forced to pick the one um, what is what do we see as our major problem it's it's very simple um, education and information is the main critical or the lack of education and information is the main problem we were talking this morning about questionable research practices well if nobody's told you something is wrong or something is questionable you have no idea that you need to avoid it or that you can't do it. So you need to be educated, you need to be informed. People need to have the information. We believe that this should be career uh, orientated, that you need different information at different stages in your career. Um, we were talking with our students and we asked about, for example, a common problem in Thailand is plagiarism, as we said. So we asked, you know, were you told that you shouldn't uh, plagiarize work? Yes. Were you told how you can avoid that? Were you given the techniques to avoid that? No. So we are not providing the tools to our people, uh, to our students to, you know, we tell them there's a problem with them, we're not providing them the information in how to overcome or avoid that problem. Um, so we think that we need to, particularly for graduate student uh, point, we need to integrate um, ethics and research conduct within graduate courses, um, really to have it that the students need this information um, really before they go anywhere near the lab bench, before they start their first experiment, before they pick up their first pipette. Um, they need to be told how to organize and integrate their data management, how they keep data, how they need to keep data, uh, again before they start their research. Um, for younger Rajans and starting Rajans, you know, it's different problems, but they need to be informed on things like authorship criteria. Who's an author? Should your technician be on your, an author on your paper? 
Um, should your support staff? What about your student? Yeah. Um, what are you doing wrong if you deny a student first authorship on their work? They need that information. They need information on how to prepare figures, which is a minefield for those of us working in biological sciences. They need information on data selection to avoid bias so that they don't misrepresent their experiments. They need to be told how to do this. We say don't publish in predatory journals, but we don't really take them through about what is a predatory journal, how to identify a predatory journal, what to do if you inadvertently submit to a predatory journal. Again, we need to provide them the tools and information. For senior returns, well, sometimes we just need to be told it all again because we kind of tend to forget. Um, plus, you know, I mean, things change. We were talking the example this morning of, you know, when I did my thesis 25 years ago, example, uh, this was okay, but now it's not. But if senior Ajans are not keeping up to date on this, they're not able to avoid, uh, to instruct their students. Um, you know, for senior Ajans, we need to explain what is conflict of interest um, and not necessarily how to avoid it. There's no problem with conflict of interest as long as it's explained. But that needs to be provided to people. Um, for senior Ajans, they need to know it. They need different sets of skills. They need to be told on mentoring techniques. Nobody teaches you how to be a mentor. Uh, they need uh, reviewer etiquette, you know, what you can and can't do with a paper or a grant to ask to review. So all of these problems are problems of information or lack of information, lack of knowing what is right and what is appropriate. So solutions, well, it's not all problems. We have some idea of solutions. Um, we need formal education programs. How about Thailand having a, a CRE? You all know CME, the Continuing Medical Education, but maybe we need a Continuing Researcher Education, um, where people have to go to these uh, to this information sessions. One of the problems in my institute we found is we can provide some of this information in forums and workshops. Um, but when we targeted, when we worked out who really needed this information, they don't go. So we have to find some way to make sure that people who really need the information really go. So getting credit for that um, might be a useful uh, mechanism that you have to have credit uh, to keep your researcher credentials current. Um, that could perhaps even be, uh, okay, so uh, engineering education, sorry. Um, institutes need to have, uh, my institute for example has no research integrity office, no research integrity committee. Maybe we need to be doing setting that up to, uh, to oversight um, these programs and to integrate them uh, within these training programs as part of the career development. Uh, the research agencies maybe can help, you know. Uh, if you, for example, refuse to take an application from an institute that had no research integrity office, uh, you would certainly see uh, research integrity offices being established very, very quickly, um, and that would then give a mechanism and, and, and foster people's attention. Overall, I think we believe that we need to institute a culture whereby uh, responsible research conduct uh, is the concern of everybody, uh, everybody in the institute, from, from the most junior technician right the way through to the most senior researcher. I hope that's less than five minutes. Thank you very much. Beautifully concise and also innovative, the idea of continuing researcher education is one I haven't heard and fantastic. So thank you for your vibrant conversation and also summarizing so beautifully. We had two more groups from the bio group and we can have a joint discussion after we've heard the different ideas. So please take note of, of what we're learning from each other. Another group from this table, yeah?
เรามีน่าจะมีแหละค่ะที่น่าจะมีระบบ mental system แต่ว่าอาจจะไม่ได้ implement หรือมันไม่มีประสิทธิภาพที่เพียงพอทำให้ไม่สามารถที่จะทำงานได้หรือตอบหรือว่าส่งผ่าความรู้หรือความเข้าใจในการปฏิบัติตัวที่ดีตามหลักเกณฑ์ของนักวิจัยที่ดีเนี่ยได้อย่างมีประสิทธิภาพนะคะแล้วก็ยังขาดในส่วนของฟันดิ้งเนี่ยในจริงไว้ที่นี่มันไม่ใช่แค่หมายถึงทุนแต่หมายถึงว่าขาดทรัพยากรเป็นรีซอสมากกว่าที่เราขาดคือขาดทั้งคนที่มีความรู้ความเชี่ยวชาญมาถ่ายทอดความรู้แล้วก็ขาดเงินสนับสนุนให้ปฏิบัติตามหลักเกณฑ์ของการวิจัยที่ดีทั้งเรื่องของห้องปฏิบัติการที่ดีมีคุณภาพมีมาตรฐานการจะวิจัยในมนุษย์ในศาสตร์ทดลองต่างๆเพราะว่าเราต้องการห้องปฏิบัติการต้องการอุปกรณ์ต่างๆที่มีประสิทธิภาพแต่ว่ามันยังขาดนะคะแล้วก็ในส่วนของอวัฒนธรรมของคนเราก็คือ culture เนาะว่าคนไทยก็จะมีวัฒนธรรมบางอย่างที่เราแก้ยากหรือว่าไม่เป็นเป็นติดอยู่ในนิสัยของเราว่ามีไม่วิจารณ์กันไม่ค่อยได้อะไรอย่างเงี้ยค่ะซึ่งอันนี้ตรงๆเนาะก็คือชัดเจนว่าเราไม่ชอบวิจารณ์กันนะคะแล้วก็ความเครียดแล้วก็ความกดดันของนักวิจัยก็เวลาเวลาจำกัดต้องการผลงาน KPI ต้องได้เอาพูดต้องมีกี่เปเปอร์ต่อปีต่อปีไม่งั้นจะไม่ต่อสัญญาต่างๆไม่ได้เรื่องท่านเรื่องตำแหน่งนะคะก็จะเป็นปัญหาที่ทำให้ไม่สามารถบางทีมันก็ทำให้เกิด research misconduct ได้นะคะแล้วก็เรื่องของ lab note แล้วก็การปฏิบัติการใช้ lab note ไม่ได้เป็นเกณฑ์ที่กำหนดในแต่ละสถานที่วิจัยหรือบางทีมีแต่ไม่ได้ปฏิบัติทำให้มันไม่สามารถดำเนินการตรวจสอบหรือติดตามได้จริงว่าสิ่งที่เกิดขึ้นเนี่ยมันมันจริงไหมถ้ามีการท้องร้องขึ้นมาว่าไปรอบเรียนผลงานกันก็ตรวจสอบไม่ได้อีกเพราะว่าหลักหนมไม่มีไม่มีการบันทึกอย่างมีที่ดีและมีคุณภาพเพราะฉะนั้นการแก้ปัญหาค่ะก็คือจริงๆแล้วผู้บริหารทั้งในระดับประเทศเลยก็คือประเทศเราก็มีมีแผนแต่อาจจะวิธีการ implement แผนต่างๆของฝ่ายรัฐก็ตามหรือของหน่วยงานภายในหน่วยงานเองเนี่ยส่วนใหญ่แผนแอนด์โพลิซีมีสิ่งที่ขาดคือ implement นะคะก็คือลงมาในขั้นปฏิบัติการเนี่ยไม่รู้จะทำยังไงหรือทำได้ไม่ไม่จริงไม่ไม่ต่อเนื่องนะคะมาแต่เดี่ยวแล้วก็เออเราเวลาเรามีแผนแล้วเนี่ยมันจะมีแผนงานเงินคนมันจะมาพร้อมกันก็คือถ้าเรามีแผนเราก็ต้องมีว่างานกระทั่นตอนเราปฏิบัติยังไงคนที่จะปฏิบัติคือใครเพราะฉะนั้นเราก็หมายว่าเราต้องหาคนที่มีความสามารถเชี่ยวชาญเป็นโปรเฟชเป็นโปรเฟชชั่นอลในด้านนั้นมาดูแลในส่วนนี้เพราะฉะนั้นก็ต้องเข้ากับเราก็พัฒนาบุคลากรที่มีความเชี่ยวชาญด้านจริยธรรมการวิจัยเพิ่มเติมขึ้นนะคะแล้วก็มีเงินที่จะสนับสนุนให้เขาปฏิบัติงานได้ก็คือเขาอยากได้ห้องปฏิบัติการที่ดีมีคุณภาพมหาวิทยาลัยหรือหน่วยงานก็ต้องมีการไพรออเรตี้ด้านจริยธรรมการวิจัยความปลอดภัยคุณภาพการวิจัยต้องมาต้องให้ความสําคัญนะคะแล้วก็คนนักวิจัยรวมถึงนักศึกษาทุกระดับก็ควรได้รับความรู้คอริคูลัมของนักศึกษาก็ควรจะต้องมีด้านเรื่องของการออกแบบการวิจัยแล้วก็รีเสิร์ชเอทิกเนี่ยสอดแทรกเข้าไปอยู่ในการเรียนการสอนนะวิจัยรวมถึงอาจารย์ใหม่ๆก็ต้องได้รับความรู้เรื่องนี้ทําให้มันมีไกด์ไลน์ขึ้นมาให้สามารถปฏิบัติได้อย่างถูกต้องนะคะแล้วก็เฟรนลี่นิดนึงคือไม่ใช่ไกด์ไลน์ไบเบิลที่แบบสวยๆแล้วก็ทําไม่ได้อะไรอย่างเงี้ยแล้วก็มี positive communication ค่ะอันนี้ก็คือหลักผู้บริหารก็ต้องลงมาคุยพูดคุยเปิดโอกไม่ใช่แบบมีนโยบายปฏิบัติแต่ว่าอย่างไรต้องมีการสื่อสารระหว่างผู้บริหารกับผู้ปฏิบัติงานทุกระดับชั้นเพื่อให้ใส่เข้าไปในค่านิยมขององค์กรทำให้มันเป็นสิ่งที่ปฏิบัติได้จริงนะคะแล้วก็ต้องมีกูแพ็คที่สุดทุกคนต้องปฏิบัติทำบ่อยๆทำให้มันสม่ำเสมอให้กลายเป็นนิสัยเกิดเป็นดีเทวีเออขึ้นมาขอบคุณขอบคุณค่ะ so one of the things I think I understood from the summary translation is similar to the first group in that we don't have instruction for mentoring. Mentoring is uh, 
inherent to the culture itself. And so if the culture and the system are broken or not conducive to positive communication, etc., then it's very challenging to overcome that. It's almost as if we need a research paradigm shift. And perhaps integration, as we heard also from the first group, as part of the whole system. So in the STI uh, graph we had earlier, um, seeing that research ethics is not one tiny box on an enormous graph, but in fact part of this overarching rainbow that goes around the whole thing and is integrated. So thank you for the summary. I apologize. I'm sure I didn't respond to each of your valid points. Thank you. So our next from the bio, we have one more from the bio group. We can take the microphone. Oh, only two. OK, good, good, good. So this is fantastic. You actually came up with a consensus amongst your group. You had small conversations, and then we found some harmony amongst the groups. And I'm sure, like this, I believe my colleague, thank you for translating, also the conversation around uh, keeping things quiet, as we heard this morning with issues that are difficult to discuss, regardless of the cultural system, it's important to make open. And that's partly why uh, I was very pleased to realize that the Asia Pacific Research Integrity, APRI, the acronym we created for that network, guess what it means in Italian? Does anyone know what it means? APRI means open. Open, like open the door, apri la porta, okay. So it's this notion of bringing it to the table, making it okay to discuss research integrity, bringing it in the open. So thank you for your summary. Our next, we have one group representing, they found a real consensus in the clinical group. Could we have please our representative? So. Uh, 
risk group to uh, micro, uh, they do uh, genetic engineering research. They didn't know that right now they have to have like a, um, a apply for the IBC approval until they uh, apply for the grant from the um, National Research uh, Council. Right. And another point for the young researcher, I think maybe they lack an experience or they lack the knowledge to, to do the research. Or, and I think that for the solution, like uh, the first part, the second group uh, told you earlier, I think the education is important or the training program for not only for the PI or researcher, I think for the student itself as well, or the assistant researcher, the all area they should have a proper training or education. And since uh, our group is uh, clinical science, so uh, some uh, research they conduct on the human, so we got uh, some problem from the clinical trial. So, yeah. um, I'm Sophia from SGI. Um, we are as, as in the clinical science, there are like the value chain as pre-clinical, pre clinical trial and uh, the bioceptic. So um, in, in each part there is its own problems. So I'll, I'll talk just only in the, um, the it, um, critical research. Uh, in this system, the critical research, um, we are we are we identify key players as um, the, the researchers and the, clin the clinical team. This, the second is the um, IRB uh, and the ethical committee, and the, the third one is um, the public who is the public, which could be the volunteer in the future. So um, for the researchers and the, cl the clinician team, um, the, the problem, um, the issues is as um, uh, Kun Hathayla said earlier, but for the, for the ethical committee, we have problem, uh, we, we have um, the issues about the efficiencies of the ethical committees. We, we need to, to support the development of the system to let them to work effect efficiently and effectively. And um, we and we also need to develop the monitoring system, not only um, when the researchers submit the consent form that finish, but we need to also to develop the monitoring system after they they do the research. And the next thing is the public. We need to raise the public awareness to let people know uh, what is right and what what could be the consequence of the research in the future when they get to be the volunteer. That's all of our group. Thank you. So the, the first example is one in which, for myself anyway, I always try to reflect upon the experience of the individual. So if for example, we're saying, well, these senior researchers know integrity, but in fact, they are ignoring it, or they don't know the rules, and so they're bad. It's very important that, again, we remind ourselves of Gandhi and this principle of compassion, because as with human subjects research and ethics, these things change over time. Remember we said this morning, the Technology and science is advancing faster, and the law is usually following behind. So we have to also do a better job at not necessarily judging people negatively, but saying, let's all come to the table for conversation, so that it's not, oh, they're, they're terrible because they don't know the rules, but instead we as an institution or a community are not discussing the rules enough, and that's why they don't know like the poor respondent in the big case I had, he never heard of quotation marks. So it's, it's not necessarily his fault, but the whole community to engage these conversations. Okay, so sorry, and, don't, 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 don't get me wrong that, that mm -hmm. I say something like that. I, I don't blame them that there's, not, there's a bad researcher or something that does not understand. I think that we have to like, uh, give them information or something. I'm not blaming them. Yes. <laughs> so sorry, but maybe, maybe I'm no, 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 no. Like I don't mean to, to um, say that you're saying wrong at all. It's just that it, it's very easy also for universities to do this, not you. You are raising an important issue. 
universities will often do that. They come out with the rule and then they say, you've broken the rules, da 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 But in fact, the university hasn't done enough to make the rule disseminated so everyone knows about it. So thank you for raising the, the issue. It's an important issue. And we as a community can work together to reduce that judgment. And the other question of human research ethics and then research integrity, our first group mentioned this concept of perhaps not having a research integrity office. So in the conversations in the global forum, in fact, we have made some distinctions between research ethics being more around human subjects, studies, etc. Different regulation in the US, 45 CFR 46 is one. And then research integrity or responsible conduct of research is a distinct regulation, 42 CFR 93. That's scary, I know those numbers by heart. <laughs> so we, we look at the um, distinction, but also the fact that sometimes you'll have an IRB handle the case, but you don't have, or I'm sorry, not the case, the protocol review, the adverse events that may come up in a clinical study but they may not necessarily handle a question of fabrication or falsification of the data emanating from the study. So in fact, we've had some conversations at the Office of Research Integrity around research misconduct that occurs in clinical research or animal research and bringing together those committees, knowing they're different, you may not have a research integrity officer or committee yet, maybe you need to establish one, it looks mainly at all these topics we mentioned, conflicts of interest, etc., fabrication, falsification, and plagiarism, but really knowing there is a distinction, and sometimes misconduct happens in a case that has everything. I had one at the University of Hawaii, had biosafety, animals, humans, and research integrity. Now, the best part about it was we had a coordinated office of compliance, and so we all knew each other. And I actually started a compliance cafe to make people from the IRB, the animals, the biosafety, and research integrity, in other words, dealing with breaches of integrity, come together often so we could talk and communicate. And then the IRB chair knew, oh, this is odd. They seem to be a forgery in informed consent. That affects participants. That chair has her role of protecting the participants. But it may also be misconduct over here. Maybe we should call them real. So it's important to know they are distinct, but they may arise um, in concert. So thank you for that wonderful summary also. And our next group is going to be the physical, physical science. And we have two groups that divided and would like to provide a summary. Just right now. Okay. Thank you. Yes, I'm Sanchai Hu from Nanotech Nasdaq. So this is my group. I uh, have on the physical science group one. So uh, according to the discussions in our group, so as you might see, uh, the problems and the solutions. So I mentioned the problem first. So the lack of education, communication, and implementation implementation of ethics policy. So for the whole process, this is not quite clear. The example is that, like during the whole process that we conduct the research, the research team needs to uh, write a proposal, and that sometimes we have to uh, include the ethics uh, procedure that what we're gonna do. But if the research team they don't understand like what kind of activity can affect their uh, when we work with others like the chemicals in terms of chemicals or in terms of environmental. So they may just act good at their work, try to do their best to get the best result without the concern of that part. And then for some of those who already have some knowledge, and they don't know who, if they want to make some ethics uh, uh, procedure, which our organization or which office they should contact. Like for some particular topic, they have to talk to these, and then they have to talk to another place. So sometimes it's really complicated and it's time consuming. The next part, when some of the results come to really good result, and it's time for the research team, especially when we work with many groups, uh, it's not clear at some certain point that how we gonna put the contribution to each other. So in some cases that happen, 
that uh, some research members said that I would get, uh, as I proposed, or uh, everyone got not, get nothing. So in some of that, many people put a lot of work for quite a number of time and put a lot of funding. And finally, we got nothing, nobody got anything. So the country got nothing from that. And finally, uh, some culture in, in the seniority in here. So for example, there are, are the senior one and junior one. So the senior prefer you to do that. And you're gonna have to listen and without, without like concern about the ethics or anything. So for the whole process, the solution is that we have to enhance the alignment and understanding and practicing of the ethics along the way of the research. So the very first part, everyone in the research area, you have to understand uh, what you're supposed to know along the way from the starting point until the end. So, and the media that you need to use is something that they can do it by themselves because researchers normally they're quite busy, so they can go back and forth, and and eventually they can like come to see and make sure that uh, it's updated, and and they can look at the information as much, uh, as often as possible to make sure they do the right uh, process, and then. Uh, for the part that uh, the ethics office or the committee, so as I heard from the presentation on the STI that now we have the national ethics committee, so it's great. But the next thing that we expected that there are just certain some of uh, topics. So at those topics, we hope that in the future, in, in many different research areas, we can have some of those practicals into those uh, spe specific topics that we can implement easily. And the next part is about the way that uh, to make the agreement. So right now there is no solid procedure. Like if one of the team members said that no, no one get nothing, then there's no matter. So we should keep the priority and make the process that the PI should be able to make the final judgment and then uh, with the reasonable evidence to prove that this work should be published with uh, reasonable contributions. And finally, when we try to prevent any conflict that's happened, but if we have the conflict, we should make sure that we can have the office that people can reach, is accessible, it can give some good response for that. And finally, just to conclude, uh, our, our, my group uh, idea is that this is we just gonna do for the certain part uh, of, the, of the research team, but during uh, we do it in the research, there are a lot of students those people gonna see what we are doing. So we have to make sure that we encourage those people and show them our good example for the ethics practice. Thank you. Thank you very much. And you are already providing an excellent example. And it's the sort of thing that when we know um, perhaps we are behaving ethically, but we neglect because of time or just don't have time to communicate usually is the problem. We forget to use it as a teaching moment, an educational moment, even if we make a mistake, to take the student with us and say, let me show you why I'm doing it this way. Not just do as I say because it's the way to do it, but have them understand why, for example, when I was working in the law firm, I often had the habit of putting my pen behind my ear and I would walk away, drive home, sometimes very late at night, and get home and I began to discover a collection of pens <laughs> on my desk and say, oh, oh, wait a second, these are law firm pens, not mine. I need to bring them back to the office. And it's a small example, but it's where every day you are making decisions and you're explaining it to those with whom you work. So I also really appreciate the idea of alignment um, and, and using it as a, a principle upon which we can um, base our actions. So we'll hear from the other, we have two more groups, one from the physical and one from sociological, and then I will step away and ask you all to respond to each other and your comments because you will learn much more from each other than you will from me. So one more from the physical sciences group. Ah, yes, please. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Ms. Zoe Hamid, Nasdaq, STI, MOST, and CUPT to organize this event. Um, our group hopes that at the end we will get the gold practices guidelines related to 
responsible conduct of research. So our group created some ideas to share with all of you. Uh, the same as the content from group number one to group number four. <laughs> Can I copy and paste? <laughs> oh, uh, okay, when, when we, uh, give me two seconds, I will focus on the point that we think that it should be top priority. Um, we need more, now we need more output, we need more products, we need more papers, more than moral and ethics. Now we need more output, products, papers, more than moral or ethics. Uh, now today, scientists and students, they don't have responsible for environments. People beside them. For example, they throw chemical into the sink instead of identifying the risk before throwing it. They use gloves to protect themselves, but forget to protect the colleagues. That's the case that I see many cases like this. They know everything, but they forget to protect environment. They uh, forget to protect uh, the colleague, but they protect themselves. I don't know how to say what it is. Um, the solution that we think that it might be is that it's not responsible for Prime Minister Bayun. It's not responsible for uh, university president or vice president for research. It's not responsible for chair of the department. But the responsible is you, everyone. Is for, uh, we should focus in workplace culture. The CEO or the university president should provide some model to create the workplace culture uh, to, be, to have the good practice. Start by you, start by, if you are a professor, you are a teacher, go back to your lab and do the good role. You are a good role model for students and you don't wait to do the. You don't wait to wait for the regulation for the prime minister or something like that. You have to do it right now. Go back to your lab, do everything, and the student can see what you did, what you do. So, thank you. You should perhaps consider going into politics. <laughs> we need more people like you. So taking personal responsibility and again in this accountable research community we're all a part of it so it begins with you very very poignant and something for all of us to remember thank you so we have now one group from the social sciences or one, yeah. good afternoon thank you for opening for us in the last group uh -huh. so many issues have already been taught so I will summarize briefly five issues from social science point of view. First of all, Pagarism's inappropriate citations or license infringement. Yeah, a Pagarism and inappropriate citation, we often found it in university, like in the thesis, and also in the research field. And infringement, License, especially for musicians, for me and my musicians, uh, a copyright of music score or performance, concert performance is very important issues. So, first, we, how to solve this problem? We need to socialize our young generations about ethnic, because it's very important that uh, from the children should be taught properly about ethnic what should they do, what should they do. And for plagiarism, nowadays we can also use software to detect it. So we need to strictly detect it. Uh, for second point, data privacy and data management. For social science, we often do an interview quantitative interview, for instance, we interview 100 or 500 or 1,000 of interviewees. So we need to respect the right of interviewees. Also, we can apply standard consent form. For instance, if other researchers would like to conduct a research in the same area and they would like to access our research data, so they need to uh, 
they need to answer formally or write some write some form to to kindly use our data and we should have a formal regulation for it. Third point, mentoring for research for researcher or a student. So for student or we need to choose proper mentor for our thesis. Um, in some university, as our colleague has already taught me before, some, men, some supervisor are very busy and they have many students for their supervise, so they could have enough time to, to read their thesis or to supervise correctly. Or if the student from quite different area come to him, he might have not enough knowledge to supervise, or student might use some literatures from foreign language and then just translate it to Thai or to English. And it's quite difficult to, to prove if it are uh, Thai or not. So the mentor should, uh, we should choose a mentor in our specific area. Fourth point about standard and quality, insufficient, rational, and background, inappropriate statistical analysis. Also, it's about a research methodology method. So, uh, we should provide research skill in the school. I mean, not waiting to the university, but from the school. We need to teach or coach pupils. We have ability of raising questions, think as a scientific way, and in the university, they should learn research methodology. And also, uh, about language is also very important because not only social science or musicians, I think also scientists also. Some of them are very good and intelligent, but they are lack of ability of language. So we also need a mentor for language or proofreader as well. So it should be a good practice and also systematic process. The last topic is about circumstance and pressures. For instance, limited time or limited budget. So we should do a good research planning and also do a progressive report regularly so that we can see the progress in a time frame, if it works consistently and if, it, if we can do a success in time. And also, our budget is also depend on popular policy from the funding source and government. To summarize, in Thailand, we have to educate and socialize our young generations about research ethics and research skill through both formal and informal educational system. Teaching much thought should also focus on creative thinking, not just only copying or just memorize it. They should learn how to raise questions and answer properly. Finding arguments with good reasons and learn to think in an analytic way. Thank you. Thank you very much. Also some wonderful ideas. And I want also to acknowledge our colleagues from Malaysia who were very kind to show me their manual for educators in responsible conduct of research at lunch. This is a document they've taken two years to put together and summarizes a lot of the things you've mentioned, including uh, the issues of training, workplace culture, mentoring, and setting an example, and even those points of proofreading and making sure that language is appropriate. And I think it's the sort of thing I am always admiring Dr. Tony Meyer from uh, Nanyang Technological University in Singapore, who's also one of the main sort of fathers of the World Conference on Research Integrity, 
when we were at the APRI Asia Pacific Research Integrity Network meeting in San Diego, he said, there is a point when we need to stop talking and start doing. So we can talk about these problems and talk about the solutions, but most fundamental is to bring integrity into action. So for the next two minutes, rather than respond to each other in a, a group, group plenary session, I would just like to ask you to turn to the person next to you or back to your small group <laughs> and follow the example of our colleague who said, let's not talk about someone else will do it, let's do it now, today, when we go back to our laboratory. So think of one thing we will take from this session we learned from each other that you will do differently. You're either a researcher, a supervisor, a vice president, uh, an independent, whatever you are in your role, just one quick thing. Talk to your group, what will you do differently, just for a couple of minutes so we can integrate in smaller conversations again and follow your examples. question. For example, I will go back home with more information from you about a gold standard because gold also reflects light and reflects a rainbow, right? And has lots of different colors to it. So I will take home things I've learned from all of you and maybe each of you as you're driving home or taking the bus or the metro or a boat home, you can think about one thing you will do differently. Please thank your colleagues and everyone for sharing these lovely summaries. And I would like to ask NASTA, and I will ask Dr. Prasit when he returns and we, when we have supper this evening, for some follow-up action from this meeting. So we are not just having great ideas and then, oh, we forget about it for the next year and nothing happens but instead that we have a chance to meet again and you all have a chance to be more engaged in the conversation. So please thank each other for your lovely... Work.